Okay, <clears throat> good morning everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, I know it's the early shift, so I appreciate you making the effort. Um, I've not really done many of these before, so I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but bear with me. I've got one of these. Okay, <clears throat> so um, today we're talking about speed skydiving, obviously. Um, I'm just going to give you a bit of a, uh, a brief intro, who's who in speed skydiving, how we measure speed skydiving, uh, why we do speed skydiving, um, how to go fast, uh, some safety and tips, and then if you want to have a go, how to have a go. Some of you have had a go already, some of you quite successfully. So uh, hopefully I won't be covering too much of what you know already. Uh, does anybody know what the world record is in speed skydiving? No, more than that. Closer, 557 kilometers an hour. That's 346 miles an hour. That is an average speed. So, that, that's me. Um, I'm, I'm here telling you about speed basically because uh, I've been doing it for quite a while, since 2007. I'm the BPA speed rep. I'm on the BPA IPC speed subcommittee. So we do all the rules and everything for the international competitions. Uh, I've been on that since the beginning. Um, and I'm on the International Speed Skydiving Association board, and I'm the UK rep. Um, four British silver medals, two national championships. This year I got double silver at the European Championships and the World Cup, and bronze at the World Air Games. And I've just broken the UK record, which I'm quite pleased about. Wow. Yes. <laughs> um, so speed skydiving is a really pure discipline. It's obviously just about speed. Um, uh, it's been around for quite a while, um, but it's been a, quite a niche discipline, and already sp skydiving is a niche sport. So it's not very well known, uh, even within sk skydiving. People people don't really know about it. We've just broken now onto the onto the scene uh, amongst the normal disciplines of speed skydiving. So um, we're seeing a. a a good growth at the moment. Um, so we're finding now that a lot of the top speeders, there's no sort of definite approach to it at the moment. We're still kind of trying to find <laughs> our way. Um, lots of people have got different approaches to it and different techniques. Um, and uh, it's exciting in that way that every Every speeder has got quite a different experience of, of what they're doing and how it feels. So there's no definite uh, formula yet. Um, and as it's still quite new, um, things are changing. It's, um, it's very much uh, a mind game. Um, and I'm hoping to be able to show you why. Um, a brief introduction to the rules. We exit from... 13,000 feet. The idea is to keep accelerating throughout the dive, but the measurement is between 8,858 feet, which is 2,700 meters, and 1,700 meters. And then your result for your jump is just the average speed. In that, that's a vertical kilometer. Um, and the speed is measured with two uh, LMB Pro tracks. You can see. I've got one there mounted on the side of the container there. And the other one's on the other side. So, um, back in 1996, Ken Hansen there, he was the first person to turn the phrase speed skydiving and introduce the idea of making it into a, a formal discipline or, um, or sport, as, as it were. Uh, then in 1999, he and Mike Brook and George Pilkington, I think some people know George Pilkington. Or is he, is he history now? Uh, they organized the first speed skydiving competitions in 1999. And then in 2000, the International Speed Skydiving Association was formed. And um, since then, they've been running World Series, three or four competitions every year. And Arnold Honegger is the chair of the uh, ISSA. And uh, 
between him and Tim Mace and a few other people um, got uh, hello got it into the IPC and now it's a, now it's a, a formal discipline accepted by the FAI. I can't believe it. Claire Murphy's just entered the room. Right. Legend of speed skydiving. Legend of thanks so much. Yeah. Smashed the breakfast room up this morning. Good and proper. Smashed it up. Yeah, sorry. Made an entry. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bit embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, where was I? Uh, Tim Mace, all round legend of skydiving, um, did a lot of work towards speed skydiving towards the end of his life, and he sadly passed away last year. Um, but, morning, come in, come in. Um, He's the only person ever to compete at a world level in every single skydiving discipline, and, and he showed his face at the um, World Cup in Prostyov, and that was the last competition he went to. Um, Larson and Bruscott have always supported speed skydiving, um, giving hundreds of devices over the, over the years towards uh, judging equipment <coughs> and as prizes, and it's... it's possible we wouldn't be able to run the competitions as we do now without their support so hi um, so it's great to have them on board and uh, Marco Vidica at the bottom there um, he's been at the top of speed skydiving really since the beginning um, and he's sort of leading the way and showing us all how to do it I, um, yet at the same time he's still streaks ahead and showing us that you can still make big jumps in world records his World record is 557 kilometers an hour, which is a jump up from his previous one of 533 kilometers an hour. So he's still making massive jumps in records. Um, so now on the uh, IPC committee with myself and Arnold and Kate Charters and Alia is Moritz Fries and Holger. Holger is our uh, resident genius. He's written a new software that we use for downloading the uh, data. Um, and uh, we, we can't use the Larsen and Bruscard software anymore as we used to because they're not supporting it anymore. Uh, Moritz Fries, he's um, a German all-round legend. Um, we call him the telephone terrorist because uh, uh, he, he'll pick up the phone and he won't give up until he's got what he wants. Um, so he's very useful to have on board with, especially with testing devices. He's done a lot of jumping with um, uh, various different types of devices like the air tech units, um, GPSs, all the, the protracts and uh, all sorts of other stuff. So, um, and with, with Arnold and Holger, they've been um, comparing the, the data to see what the most reliable system is. And it seems that we have the most reliable system at the moment. So, um, but the testing is ongoing. Uh, Moritz as well has been around for years. He, he so sort of started off in skydiving, sewing his own wingsuits back in the day, and he did German eight-way camera. Um, he's a prolific base jumper and uh, and a very accomplished canopy pilot as well, with numerous um, uh, German records. Um, so, um. This is the, on the uh, International Speed Skydiving Association website, we have uh, a page which is uh, a kind of all-time list of people's personal best speeds. Um, we still use the same rules as we have done for years, so all of the speeds are comparable over the years, so you can, you can look on there. And this is kind of what a lot of speed skydivers look at. They were trying to get themselves further up the, up the board, so it's quite satisfying when you get a little, take a couple of steps up and... It's quite addictive as well for that reason. That's me there. <laughs> there's about there's nearly 400 names on that board, so not that I'm blowing my own trumpet or anything. Um, <clears throat> so measuring speed, uh, we use the Larson and Bruscard Pro Tracks, um, and uh, there's two. There's obviously two main main ways to measure speed. You can either use altitude and time over those altitudes, or you can use um, like the Doppler effect, like um, a radar, or measuring, I think it's an electromagnetic pulse you send out, and then 
um, the uh, you measure the speed of something approaching you or going away. You you, you could tell us a bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we've always used the uh, using altitude and measuring just timing between two altitudes because for us it's the most um, affordable and accessible means of doing it. We can't uh, we can't afford to have a uh, an electronic radar device on the ground to measure each speed skydiver is exiting, and um, it's just not affordable for us at the moment. We can use it in testing, and we've got some plans this year with the German um, with the German telephone terrorist who's managed to get through to ahead of uh, an army base who operates this piece of equipment and uh, he just was on the phone for hours a couple of weeks ago until he got through to the right person and the right person was like, yeah, sure, just give me, give me a proposal and turn up and jump here. So that's, that should be fun. Um, but so we'll be, yeah, we'll be able to test uh, the accuracy of the devices. Um, so that's about that. So why speed skydiving? There's different aspects, obviously, of any sport or discipline that attract people for different reasons. Uh, for me personally, I came from free flying, and I loved the fact that I could fly. Um, I love flying fast anyway, but I loved the fact that I could fly at 300 miles an hour. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's just you and gravity, basically. Um, it's, it's, it's good sometimes because it's a solo discipline. You're not you're not involved in a team with politics and all that kind of stuff. Um, not that I'm a loner, but <laughs> um, it's nice to just co to work with yourself sometimes and 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 make gains yourself uh, in something rather than relying on other people. Um, is making me sound more like a loner. Storm yeah. Also, um, other. Skydiving disciplines, you, you have judges who, who will mark you subjectively like in free flying and stuff like that, which is a big frustration for a lot of competitors. So speed skydiving, you're measured by an electronic device and it's, uh, it's not a fallible judge looking at you. Um, so it's quite, it's quite an intense discipline. Um, because you are at high speeds and you're opening yourself out to a lot more risks than in most other skydiving disciplines. Yet, you, to be successful, you have to be like calm and relaxed. And I love that. It's kind of, it's, it's a sort of like an um, extreme meditation. Um, and that really appeals to me. And, and it's kind of like being zen, um, sort of being still and calm whilst. Uh, whilst trying to fly faster, although if you think about the speed, then you often you'll, you'll get distracted and you'll start to slow down. So it's very much a head game, um, and, uh, um, and you'll find that people, when they're relaxing into a competition or, or whatever, then the speeds will, will start to increase. If they're getting um, distracted with their position on the on the rankings and all that kind of stuff, then it can often have a negative mental effect and then you'd see their speeds drop off. Or if they're under pressure for whatever reason, um, um, you'll see that affect the speeds. It's really about being calm and relaxed and, uh, and it's just being in the zone. Um, so that's one of the reasons, that, another reason why I enjoy it, because it helps me just to stay calm and relaxed. Um, so, um, so progression into speed skydiving, it, it, it's relatively, <clears throat> relatively easy to, to get into it and get some reasonable speeds. Um, although, obviously, flying head down position is, is something that needs to be mastered first. Um, but getting up and beyond those initial speeds is, is the trick, really. You'll have each person, I see it quite regularly, will get into speed skydiving and then they'll hit a sort of a plateau where they feel like they can't go any faster. And that's kind of, you can look at their body size and shape and you say, well, I can see why that's around that speed. It's kind of a natural um, speed for them. Um, and a way to describe it, I suppose, is um, if you're not flying perfectly vertical, you're going to have a constant airflow across your body and your, the weight of your body and the surface area will determine what speed that object can move at. 
Um, and the trick with speed skydiving is to try and remove as much of your body from the airflow as possible. So effectively you're flying within the burble of your head and shoulders. So um, in most disciplines you're, you're trying to use more and more of your body as a control surface, but with speed skydiving imagine getting all of that out of the, the air and flying directly behind your head and shoulders. So you really need at the beginning to um, to work up to the point where you're going to be in that perfectly vertical position and then you'll get a massive acceleration when you when you hit the sweet spot but you need to be ready for that because if you're over rotating you're going to go onto your back and we call that negative you'll just feel like you're going faster but actually you're just accelerating faster and faster horizontally um, so the trick is to try and hit that sweet spot at a perfect angle and uh, and get into your own burble Timmy! <laughs> okay, um, clothing wise you can see here Peter Warren he's wearing slightly baggy trousers and a tight top that's that's your standard go-to outfit now for speed skydivers and it's a very um, it's a good way to to start to learn. You've got less drag on your upper body, a tiny bit of drag on your lower limbs which helps you to be stable like a shuttlecock. Um, and that will, will get you to the point that you can sort of break 400 kilometers an hour easily and it's, and it's good. As you get faster, it's the, the, the clothing doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, but at the beginning it will definitely help with uh, flying stable. Um, talking to Moritz one day, he described how um, you have your center of gravity and at certain speeds flying head down position your center of gravity is up sort of in your upper body and as a shuttlecock your center of pressure is lower down where around your legs as you speed up in speed skydiving your center of pressure will catch up with your center of gravity and when it gets close to or overtakes that's your that's where you'll you'll have uh, difficulty staying stable um, so in that initial build up that kind of outfit is very useful. Um, if you can learn to fly with a slicker outfit then once you get beyond that then it'll be more beneficial. So I've just got a little bit of video footage here of me from this year just to give you an idea of what it looks like on a speed jump. You can see that the live speed there. This is at the World Cup in Toka. At the top there you can see the altitude going down. That's the entry gate I'm going into now. So do a, a kilometer somewhere between six and a half, seven and a half seconds. So from 13 grand to three and a half doesn't take very long. That's my new, new Zealand Aerosports um, JVX there. You should mention that to get chance. I'll try. I think that's Dubai. So you can see exit similar to free fly tracking or head down exit. So you can see I'm quite vertical there. If you watch now, I start to go slightly negative, so I end up slightly on my back. So I didn't get a very good result on this jump. There I'm going slightly, so I'm actually tracking in that direction now. And the speed drops off a bit. There. Just towards the end. And one more. This is the final of the World Air Games, which was a bit better for me.
Oh, is it came open? <laughs> I'll just cut the opening off that one. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get down and we pester the judges, they'll show us this eventually, which is um, a graph of the jump. The red, the red line uh, in the middle shows the average of the two pro tracks. The, the higher line is one pro track and the lower line is the other pro track. Um, this, this line is a rough representation of what happened. It's not perfectly accurate. What, the only thing we're concerned about is the, the time that you pass through 2,700 meters and the time that you pass through 1,700 meters, and then it's just simple average speed. Um, this is a helpful aid for knowing roughly what happened during the dive. You can see it's just a nice smooth acceleration throughout the jump. Not a lot happened. I had a bit of a wobble there maybe, but that's roughly give or take four seconds where it happened. It's not perfectly accurate because of how the pro tracks work. Um, that's, um, that was my, that's my UK record jump. So you can see I've, got, I've hit roughly 550 kilometers an hour at the, at the top. And that's, that's really what you want to get, is a smooth acceleration throughout the jump right until the, till the end, until the exit gate. Keep the acceleration going. That's the idea. Um, oh. I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> this is um, Marco Vidica's world record jump. You can see top, he's got to sort of almost 570 kilometers an hour. Um, he has been over 600 kilometers an hour at peak at times, but not managed to go in fast enough to keep the average up. Um, Mark, I love Marco's quote. The faster you go, the more relaxed you have to be. Stay in the flow like my three-year-old daughter playing with their brothers. Um, it's kind of a nice way sort of referring to living, being in the moment and, and taking things as it comes and not, uh, not overthinking stuff. Um, has anybody got any questions about these? No. Oh, if you have any questions, just shout out. We'll do questions at the end as well. Um, so rules again, I just I told you a bit earlier, but you've got the exit, um, the measurement gate, other rules. You're not allowed to wear any extra weight. You can only use skydiving gear that's available on the mass market. You can get away with some kinds of modifications, like different materials on your containers, things like that. But you can't like have a rig made out of with extra panels with inbuilt lead in it and stuff like that. So. Um, uh, you can get a penalty on a jump. If, if the two pro tracks read more than 30 kilom kilometers an hour and apart, you'll get a penalty, which just reduces your, um, your result for that jump. That's basically, um, if they are reading quite different speeds, you, 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 you kind of know that it might, the readings might not be as accurate as you can get them. So um, we'll just give a penalty then just to make sure that you're not um, having some wild pressure changes, which is falsely pushing your results up. Um, so for a competition, you'll do six initial rounds, um, a, a semi-final and a final, and your best four jumps is your um, the, the sum of your best four jumps is your result for the competition. Can you do a weight question? Yes. So is there any factoring in of your actual personal weight? No. So say somebody who's only five foot turns up and in the same yeah. competition, nothing's factored in for the difference in your weight. No, there's no. There's no factor for different body shapes and sizes and weights. Right. Um, it does make a difference, but there is so much in technique, and you can see from the top competitors that there's all sorts of different body shapes and sizes. Yes, weight does help, but it doesn't make enough of a difference for there to be any kind of levelling of the playing field at the moment. That may change, but at the moment, it's, uh, it's you know, there's enough smaller people making massive gains in speed skydiving for there not to be a concern that it's... Uh, only for fat people. I, I mean, look at me. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so safety-wise, um, just the usual stuff, exit, separation. Um, in a speed competition, every speeder will turn 90 degrees off jump run in opposite directions just to maintain separation. Um, free fly friendly equipment you need to be really on the um, on the safer side of free fly friendly for the equipment it really you know you 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 don't want anything to happen any equipment malfunction 
at 300 miles an hour, you know, it's, you can imagine, it's just, it, you know, it's going to be deadly if not you're going to have a serious injury. So we always, you know, tighten our closure loops before a competition, um, make sure when we're packing that risers are nice tucked away, there's no little bit of uh, brake line poking out, all that kind of stuff. You don't want anything flapping around in free fall. Um, we just say no Velcro, you know, some old containers got Velcro riser covers. Um, riser covers coming open can be a big problem also with... Um, vector magnetic riser covers. The standard vector um, magnets are not strong enough to hold the riser covers closed um, at that speed. So they will do a mod on request. You can have two magnets as they normally do, but they'll give you stronger ones, or you can just put an extra magnet in there, which does keep them closed. Um, that says deploy, but it means deployment system. Um, uh, the ideal deployment system for speed is the pull out, old pull-out system where the pilot chute is actually inside the container and you manually pulling the pin with your, with your toggle. Um, and then you've got less on the outside of the container to catch air or whatever. Uh, a good tight BOC is fine. Um, um, and we'd always recommend a, a pad rather than a hacky or, or one of those like... Um, like he's got one of those plastic rings. Anything that can catch a bit of air is not really a good idea. So a nice tucked away free fly pad is good. Um, the rules are one audible, but we always say have two. Um, sometimes it can be quite noisy and you just want to make sure that you're confident that you're going to be altitude aware with, with, um, with all the help you can get. Uh, full face helmet, helmet is a good idea because of uh, less wind noise. Um, and at the moment, there's lots of different um, advice about how much experience you need before you want to start speed skydiving. Um, I would always say at least 200 jumps and some free fly experience is, is helpful. Um, for one, you've got more experience of three-dimensional flying and you've got um, a higher speed experience because obviously if you are straight away quite good and you hit a very high speed straight away it still will be so much quicker than a normal free fly jump that you just you know the jump will be over like that and if you're not confident with your equipment your audibles go off but you think there might be a mistake something you know before you know it you're low and and in a whole world of um poo there you go. yes what yeah do you use AAD? i've got a cypress use that's fine yeah i mean aeds don't really come into the equation it's just, oh, it's just yeah you have to have any of that extra setting on it. I suppose because mm -hmm. you're deploying at a yeah. normal height. You're still, no. yeah, you're still within yeah. safe sort of parameters of normal skydiving. So right. um, it's obviously if you go low yeah. and really low, then you might get an AED fire, but any, you know. I didn't know if Cypress had done any like testing on it. Using there's there's nothing you could do in a speed jump that would affect the operation, normal so, operation right, of a Cypress because no. you're not going you're hopefully not going through 1,200 feet at 300 miles an hour, no. but then still it would still arm and fire as it's yeah, designed it's to. Designed. Yeah. Speaking of 300 miles an hour, is it quite stressful coming out of being in, in full speed and then going down to deployment speed? Yeah, uh, the, that's, that's when you'll really feel the speed, is coming out of your dive into back onto your belly. Um, you don't always feel it when you're in the dive because it's quite smooth sometimes, but, um, yeah, you really feel the speed when you start to get your levers out in the air again and and it can be quite aggressive and if you do a lot of speed jumps in a day you can get quite tired by the end of the day um uh so that's yeah that's really when you feel a lot of the speed um so i, I come out of it with my arms tucked in like this i don't put my arms straight out like that yeah and cover my uh, handles as well um yeah that's another thing about safety is making sure that you're your handles are nice and the Velcro is good on them or whatever because you wouldn't want, if you're coming out of your dive onto your belly and you've got a flappy handle, you don't really want to chop or deploy your reserve accidentally. So uh, some tips of how to be a successful speed skydiver. Everyone always says safety first, but for obvious reasons, but the other side of it is um, 
you need to be confident on your jump that you're happy with everything because if you have any doubt in your mind it's going to play play on your mind and you're not going to be able to be relaxed and clear your head and do your jump properly so it is really important to make sure you're 100% happy with your um, equipment that you're not going to have a premature opening and also that you're altitude aware um, with more experience you get more just natural altitude awareness you know where you are in the jump with low experience people um, they'll lose awareness of what height they're at um, generally and will get confused and then you, you might as well scratch that jump because it's, it's, be, it's not going to be a great one. So confidence in your equipment is, is very important. Um, um, body position obviously is a big factor um, and body awareness as well and I think this is one of the reasons why so many people say they do certain things but actually what they're doing is something different. Body awareness is such a strong thing and I always try and spend time before a competition, during a competition, just trying to um, visualize being in a nice straight position um, and try and remember what that feels like for when I'm in free fall because sometimes in free fall you can it feels so much different to being on the ground you might feel like you're vertical but you you, can't, you might be over stretching and stuff you know arching or de-arching whatever and that's going to have a big effect on your on your speed so do do something that will help you with your body awareness to know what your um, what your body's doing because also if you're if you've got your head cranked back quite far, it's not really a natural position for you to be in. So being aware of what your body's doing um, is, isn't as easy when you're, as when you're on the ground. Um, um, picking a heading is a nice way of, of keeping smooth and, uh, and for safety as well. You, just, you know you're not going to go hooning up jump run or anything but also at the same time it'll be something nice and smooth to focus something constant to focus on to um, <clears throat> to help you to be uh, to be smooth um, be positive just some life advice <laughs> um, when I say positive I mean um, have more air on your front than on your back being on your back is negative being on your front is positive and that's how we refer to it in speed skydiving um, because you've got the container on your back, um, you will get less airflow across the back of your legs. So if you can feel any air on the back of your legs, you're probably negative. So just concentrate on trying to feel airflow on the front of your body more than on the back. Um, take, take your time, go slow and steady, just relax. Don't try not to get stressed out and anxious about you must go fast and then you're, in your mind you're going to go faster and I'm like, frantic in the plane, you're just going to be creating tension and um, you need to be relaxed. Clear your mind, relax, empty your mind and uh, just relax and let go and gravity will do the work. Oh, don't know how that got in there. So, <clears throat> to finish off, if you wanted to have a go at speed skydiving, uh, I'm going to be running three BPA coaching roadshows this year, dates and locations to be confirmed. Um, we have the, as always, the, that's all jumbled, isn't it? We have the um, ISSA World Series. We've got three events this year, one in Germany, 5th to the 8th of May, one in Italy, which is to be confirmed still, and one in Sweden between the 16th and 19th of June. And that will be the final of the World Series. Then, the yeah, in Toyga, they're running basically uh, a, a week before. Is it a week before the Mondial? Yeah, just before they want to attract loads of people to Toyga to do um, their training, up, running up to the World Championship. So they're going to do a great deal on jumps and accommodation and everything. Like I've heard rumours of twelve euros a jump, and that will include your accommodation and everything. So look out for that because that would be great for any discipline but for speed in particular there's going to be quite a few speeders out there I think training in the run up to the uh, world championships. BPA Nationals, Hibblestow 27th, 29th of August and then watch out as usual for the D Dubai competitions they'll probably be DIPC 7 this year. Is that right? 6 or 7? Yeah. Um, there's on Facebook find out about events and ask questions at UK Speed Skydiving. Um, 
that is the uh, ISSA website with um, all of the scoreboards from all the competitions that have ever run in speed skydiving. So you can compare yourself and look at previous competitions, look at all the graphs. Every time you go to look at a competition, you can click on the result from the jump and it will show you that person's graph so you can spy on people. Um, and then any other information, BPA website, there's events, calendar, all that kind of stuff. So has anybody got any questions? Yes. When you come into the end of the jump, do you travel very far horizontally as you're slowing yourself down? As you sort of come out yeah, it depends how much of a track you go into as you're coming out. Um, it's advisable to take it a little bit so that you are then giving yourself more separation. But it, it depends how fast you're going, how much, how long you stay in the track. But if you just immediately go onto your belly, you're not going to travel far at all. But um, and also, again, it depends what angle you're at in your jump. If you haven't managed to get perfectly vertical, you're going to be traveling a little bit anyway, and then just that little bit at the end will give you a bit of extra. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Half the people in here are speed skydivers anyway, so <laughs> probably all half asleep now. Um, great. That's it. You can go, uh, go and listen to Julian Peelman next door for the end of his lecture now. Thank you.